Hello everybody, this is Dr. Rocker, and I wanted to create a special video related to some of the cellular changes associated with an acute inflammatory response because this is a common area of confusion for many students. So let's just draw our run-of-the-mill blood vessel. I'm just drawing it from the side here. All right, so this is just a blood vessel. It is under inflammation, and we know that an inflamed blood vessel will vasodilate, um, mainly because of histamine binding with endothelial cells. Okay. So I just have those arrows in indicating an increase uh, in diameter, really in all directions. Okay, So it's larger than it would normally be. We see an increased vessel permeability. And what we're also going to see, just free-floating normally, through the blood is a white blood cell. Okay. White blood cells. They are going to be numerous there, and sometimes they're called leukocytes. Other times they get more specific about their their names, but we're we're treating them all the same for the time being. Well, at the site of acute inflammation, white blood cells that are normally just everywhere are going to line up along the vessel wall. So they're going to get close, but they're not actually touching or interacting. That is a process known as margination. Okay. Margination is going to be nothing more than white blood cells accumulating near, but not physically in contact with the blood vessel wall. They're still going to be floating through the circulation, but very slowly. Now the next step is actually going to be where they roll along, okay? So they're kind of tumbling. White blood cell rolling is associated with selectins. So associate selectin molecules stimulating a white blood cell to roll or some stumble along the vessel wall. The next step in this process is firm adhesion. Okay, It actually takes a little bit of a um, structural change at this point in time. And firm adhesion is this step. Okay. That allows for much more secure binding with that white blood cell along the vessel wall. So it's sort of stuck there, and it's making its way through that vessel wall. Now, if that white blood cell, I'm gonna, if that white blood cell begins squeezing its way through, okay. So it's gone to this next step, and it is squeezing its way through the vessel wall. That is an important concept. Diapedesis. Okay. Diapedesis is going to be the name for a white blood cell as it's physically making its way through the blood vessel wall. Okay. Diapedesis is then going to be followed by by chemotaxis. Chemotaxis is uh, described as sort of a chemically induced signaling process which would allow that white blood cell to go all which ways after it has left circulation. So very importantly, chemotaxis occurs after a white blood cell has left circulation via the process of diapedesis. And sometimes it's described, uh, chemotaxis is described as a white blood cell following a chemical gradient. So what are the takeaways from this video? During acute inflammation, white blood cells have a variety of different stages, each with very particular names. Margination is the lining up of those white blood cells near the vessel wall. Then we have rolling, which is associated with uh, selectin interactions. Then we had firm adhesion, and I meant to say it, but I forgot. Firm adhesion is associated with interactions with integrins. 
Um, then we have diapedesis. After that firmly adhesed white blood cell squeezes its way through the blood vessel wall, that's going to be diapedesis. Then diapedesis gives rise to chemotaxis as that white blood cell is signaled tel towards the site of infection or injury via chemical signaling uh, processes called, uh, well, just molecules called chemokines. Hopefully this was helpful.